I'm Washinga Anami, founder and CEO Thama Limited. So Thama Limited is a company that manufactures locally nail care products. We have a range of 13 products which are nail polish, gel polish, acetone, nail polish remover, um, surgical spirit, methylated spirit, cuticle oil, cuticle creams, massage oils, exfoliating body scrubs, sanitizer, hand sanitizer, and antibacterial hand wash. Uh, so born and raised in Nairobi, <laughs> schooling I did in Nairobi as well. For my university, I did BSc Financial Engineering, then I graduated uh, and did Masters in Strategic Management. And as I was doing my undergraduate, I really loved doing nail polish, so that's where the idea was birthed. So after I finished campus, I decided to locally um, start distributing local brands of nail polish and just see how the market is as I was still thinking of how to do it by myself. So um, in the background, I was just uh, curious and learning about the raw materials, what they are, what their components are made of, the ratios of doing them. So in uh, when I was doing my master's, I decided to you know what, do this now professionally. I got a cosmetic formulator, we sat down, we thought about all the formulations that they can be. And even with that, we still had to tweak the formulas a bit of nail polish, I started with nail polish, just one product. Then I, the formula was a success. So I graduated to gel polish and the formula was also a success. So with that, the market also demanded for other nail care products. And that's how I expanded my product portfolio to 13 products, nail care products. I always knew I would end up in manufacturing of beauty products. That I knew for sure. Like I always loved the transformation that comes with beauty, the boldness that beauty gives you. So I knew for sure I wanted to learn in that field. But of course, my parents, they told me, whatever field you learn in, you have to be an educated person for that matter. So finance was chosen for me. <laughs> and I ended up doing okay. So <laughs> for masters, I chose for myself what to do. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's just say it was by divine grace and purpose when you pass just a line because financial engineering just added more skill to what I do. Know that you learn on the job to formulate and also like I said I got a professional cosmetic formulator. The thing with business is you cannot be everything, you cannot do everything. So the best thing to do is to hire professionals who actually are extremely excellent in their field and rely on that skill because you need to understand if it's marketing, finances, human resource, you cannot do all that by yourself. So you have to get a really good team, even if it's a small team, and even if you're outsourcing them, just um, have people who know better than you so that they can push your dream further without making as many mistakes as you would have by doing it alone. Uh, my passion and purpose. Passion and purpose, I love, love, love doing beauty products. I am passionate about the whole process of like, something is just in the garden and like, let's say sunflower. So from pressing that sunflower to getting the oil and to see it become a massage oil, let's say, it really leaves me in awe how that transformation ends up making someone feel so good about themselves because once they use it, they really feel rejuvenated. They feel excellent about how they are. Like that spa experience just leaves them transformed. So for me, when a customer is leave, lives um, with joy after using my product, I think it fulfills my purpose. Yes, that joy they just get when they see the colors of nail polish and they just are in awe. Yeah, so that to me is my purpose. Support has been there from the onset. Trust me, the support is crazy because they still don't know what I'm doing, but they support it regardless of what I'm doing because they trust me that I'm making a very sane decision about my future and my life. So they've fully, totally supported my crazy idea. 
they've been there for me they've been they've helped in marketing they've helped in production they've helped in, like in everything i would ask help in if they if they know someone who can help me in something they also refer me to their person if they know someone who would want the products they also assist in marketing so support has been there the love has been there they've i've never felt at one point that i made the wrong decision because of the support they have always offered me uh i have so many role models but the person who i can think of right now is SCW, the lady who founded sc polish she's just a role model because like her we share the same journey she started doing this in her kitchen and her brand is worldwide known and the quality is excellent and she's just maintained the name for herself though she sold, she sold her company um she still even when you're able to create something and someone else believes in your product that much and they actually invest their money to buy the product the company itself to me, that's a person who's really created something of value. Uh, what keeps me today even going with or without profit is the fact that number one, I'm creating, creating a beauty product that I myself would use even without uh, persuasion. You know, it's a product that I would use on myself. These are products that I would use without any question. I'm 200% sure about the quality of the product. That's number one. So I, even when I'm selling and marketing, I am so confident because I know there was no mistake. <laughs> Let me say that when formulating the product, when the product was being packaged, everything, good manufacturing practices were observed when doing it. So number two also, when I see um, repeat customers come and say, oh my God, wow, your product is so nice. I really want the whole range. I really want to stock this product. So in shops call us and say, wow, we really want to stock this product. Do you have it? How, how many pieces would you be willing to, like when we're just negotiating all that. So when peop other people believe in what you've created and when you see people also being receptive to made in Kenya brands, it's also a really nice way of supporting um, our own, you know, because even me in the, it, I reciprocate, it doesn't have to be um, beauty products, you know, I'm always constantly looking to consume Kenyan brands, so to me, that pushes me to just, even if it's not supporting myself, I also try and support someone else's dream in purchasing their product. Um, challenges are many, and one, I would like to um, increase my production capacity, because right now it's still not where I have envisioned it to be. To, um, I think also um, taxes are a bit high. <laughs> so if something is done about that, I would really appreciate because like for packaging material, the excess tax was recently increased and now that we had to change our whole price list and sometimes even the raw materials, um, the tax also is a bit high so yeah that that would really help i try as much as possible to source everything locally because i really want to maintain the quality of the product and i also believe in the people who supply me the product so it's a whole chain it doesn't just stop with me so even like when i'm buying the oils and i'm buying the raw materials i try as much as possible to have everything sourced locally and even I, if I have to import, I really make sure that there's also someone locally who has started thinking about what I'm importing and then I can transfer my, you know, clientele to them. So we really do have so many Made in Kenya brands and I would really like everyone to just support Made in Kenya brands. We are really trying. I think it's a good um, thing when you see a whole pool of young people just trying to create things from home and remember these things some some of them create out of passion and just purpose and some people just create them because lack of employment opportunities you know so everyone has a story and i believe there's joy in when they sell us good products so i would really urge everyone buy kenyan build kenyan so i we have a distributor shop it's in town, Ronald Gala Street, Nairobi CBD, ground floor, shop G42. So that's where most people like come and just choose the colors because like for gel polish and nail polish, 
we have a range of 1,000 colors. Yes, so that's a lot. We can send you a color chart, but still um, people prefer to come and feel the experiences of the different finishes of the products. They even like for the oils and the scrubs, they really want to come and smell them. So that's one way. Two, we are also on social media. So you can find us at Tama underscore official. That's on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. We are on, we are on Tama official. Yes, and also word of mouth when people just come and refer their friends, their sisters, their best friends. So that's how we really do it. I think um, success to me is when I think um, the vision for this company has been achieved. Because when I started Tama, I started with the end in mind. So I know what my end looks like for this company. And when I reach that end, I won't tell you now. <laughs> but when I do, trust me, I'll call you and I'll let you know what this um, journey has been like for me. And I think it's time for me to move on, on to something else or to just retire. I think also other people have different definitions of success and it's okay. Success can be also defined in many spheres. It can be family-wise, career-wise, educational-wise, but every day I think it's also good to have different levels of achievable success. So that way it makes the journey very easy. So if we say, okay, last month we were able to sell like 2,000 bottles and this month we've been able to sell, to sell 6,000 bottles of gel polish, to me that's success. So every day I look for things that give me success and I really am grateful for them. So I appreciate the little things that are a success to me. So some steps to get to success is to, like I said, having tangible, realistic goals that you, self, you set for yourself and push yourself to actually visualize the goals that you have set for yourself. So if you really wanted to reach a certain customer base this month, you give yourself steps. So how do I reach this customer base? What's the, what's the definition of this customer base? So is it women? Is it in this age category? Other than that, now what's the location of these women? Where are they located? So when you just find out, you break down success into what you would want it to look like. So you really come to the nitty gritty. If, it, if, if, if they're in this location, what's their maybe income bracket? Are they in school? Are they working? Are they at home? So when you just go on ticking those things and finding access to it, it becomes very easy to define success for yourself as opposed to saying, okay, I want to sell this product to the whole of Kenya. So that will be <laughs> quite a challenge. So it's good to break it down for yourself and see how can I achieve this every day, step by self, step by step, and what am I doing with myself to achieve this? Number one, number two, who, I, who do I need on board to help me achieve this? Number three, what finances are needed or not needed to achieve this? Then you can set it for yourself. Um, I think we are so used to the song of just start. It's a journey, just start. <laughs> and I think that's where sometimes people are misled because they start and they start feeling miserable they, they, because everyone told me to start, but they didn't tell you like the small steps of starting. Start well, start with what you have, start within your limits, identify who or what you need before you start. That way it makes the starting journey easy. Remember, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So know for how long you would want to do it first and also have the end in mind. So that when you're starting, it's like you're working backwards. So it really keeps you in focus when you have the end in mind. So because you get to know what I'm supposed to be doing at a particular time, so you're not wasting time. And even when failures come along the way, it becomes easy to pick yourself up and to just keep going because you know you have a vision that you need to really fulfill and you really know that there's a goal that you've set for yourself. So even when failures come, you just wake up and learn from them and you keep going.
being a woman in this industry is good because number one, I understand the product 200% in out. Number two, I get to know what the end user needs because I am also an end user in this, in this industry. So I get to know what would work for me, what wouldn't work for me. And because as a woman, I'm also evolving and different spheres of being a woman require different versions of you. So sometimes you're a daughter, sometimes you're a mom, you're a wife. All those things require a different version of you. So I think I understand the product in out. So even like in gifting, I would know what to gift someone in where in the sphere of life they are most comfortable at because I really understand the product because I'm a woman and it's a superpower. Some of my career highlights are being able to see myself develop a brand from just an idea and people resonating with the brand and people not forgetting the brand that it exists. Also being able to have a to increase my product portfolio range. Like I said, I just started with one product, now I have 13 products and it's taken time. So just sometimes you measure growth with the little things that you do for yourself. So for me, that way, I just think it's a highlight. Also, when you, I have a team now, before I never used to have a team. So also seeing me having a team and we just work so well together and now there is people employed by this company i think transforming lives is really such a beautiful thing in the small way that you're able to do it is also a highlight <laughs> competition will always be there competition will always always be there but like I said, having the end in mind really keeps you focused on the journey. So sometimes like you can, when I started out, yes, I was really fearful of the competition, but I realized, you know what, it's just, I need to phase out the noise and work with confidence because even when you're pricing your product, do you price it because of competition or do you price it because of the value you give your clients? So when you get to answer such questions, if you're giving your clients real value of the product, then competition, you, you really block it out and you focus on making your product the best product that there can be on earth. So, and price it correctly. So ideal is competition by phasing it out in my mind. The lessons I've learned in this business is keep going keep going some days you will require all the strength in you some days it's going to be so easy some days it's going to be the hardest thing and you'll question your decision but if it gives you fulfillment it's okay keep going also on the journey you'll find some things that work for you and some things that don't work for you and it's okay to change your mind about certain decisions. It's okay to learn that you made a mistake when you made a certain decision. It's okay to understand that the clientele also evolves. They want different trends, they want different needs. So also you have to keep up with what the market wants. Oh, I wish I started sooner. <laughs> I really do wish I started sooner. I was so fearful before I started, but I came to realize, you know what, just believe in yourself. And also what I wish I knew was this journey, it's only you who's going to make it work. You can peg um, your success on someone else. You can want to blame your team member for not doing something. You cannot. You can want to maybe blame the market for not receiving your product well, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to quickly adjust to what the market wants, to quickly adjust to making your product the best product in the market. So at the end of the day, you're the chief decision maker of your journey. So that to me, really, I have to remind myself that every day. So we can say seven years. Seven years, I mean, um, the first three years, I just spent them on developing the brand, the product. Then um, I was also distributing other brands. 
but they weren't working so well. So four years, so uh, three years when I started, that's 2013, yeah. So from 2013 to like 2016, I started with just thinking about the product, um, getting samples. Then 2016 to 2017, I started now getting approvals for this product. Then I started now selling in 2018. That's the journey. <laughs> um, different strokes, different folks. If you think that's what's making you confident, I mean, um, consult with your doctor if it's safe. Um, consult with your people if they're okay with you doing it, if they think the change is too drastic. Whatever rocks your boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, in your entrepreneurial journey, just... Um, like I say, I'm a firm believer in being unconventional in the way we've been taught things. So you don't have to maybe think that things are done in a certain way or this journey is meant to go like this. I think it's a very wide road. Find what works for you. Find what gives you success. Find your own definition of success and run with it. Like I said, um, you can find me on Thama underscore official. That's on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter is Thama official.